Toyota, the king of mediocrity. Its Royal Highness has just announced naming rights sponsorship to Ass Backwards Ideas Week. Such a worthwhile cause and just what society needs. <laughs> I think you'd agree. Details next. And now, the Academy Award for extreme cynicism wrapped in prosciutto and served on a bed of credibility in tatters goes to Toyota, the company which has just started demanding that you pay a monthly fee to use shit your car already came with standard. <laughs> yes, we'll get to that. I'm John Cadogan from AutoExpert.com.au and I get new cars cheap. <laughs> for buyers here in Australia. G'day. Hang on. Website for that, obviously. Or you can simply click the card, which on the balance of probability might be. Up there now, dude. And I double dead dingoes dong a dare you to give it a crack. Card clicking. It's quite therapeutic. It'll put the whip in your cream. Just like Tiffany. I don't know what inspired her to try that with the whip the first time, but... Dude, I'm so glad she did. A quick shout out right now, however, to... Dorothy the Dinosaur, whose new free digital TV show premieres tonight. Yes. Dorothy Undead, or whatever the hell they're going to call it, something like that. Quote, It is very much the tomorrow of media. Yes. And other, let's call them loosely, words, said... Ms. Dinosaur in the official press release. Such a tease, dude. I can't wait. I wonder if Jeff will finally wake up. That's the big question to me, anyway. You'll find out tonight. This video is sponsored by Olight. Big sale tonight, 8pm for the next few days. Link in the description. Big discount on Warrior 3. Love me a good Warrior 3. The ultimate hybrid EDC tactical torch and... The swivel is back in stock, too. I do love a good swivel, like first thing. Sets the tone for the rest of the day, don't you agree? Especially if the whip has been pre-creamed. Now, in asshole corporate news, an obscure Reddit post mid-November alleged that, I'm paraphrasing, Toyota would place its head even further up the other end of its digestive tract by making... Remote engine start, which is a feature built into some key fobs globally from Toyota since 2018, they would make that a subscription-based service. Like, if you want to keep using that, in other words, Toyota will extort from you an ongoing fee. Reddit moderators actually considered this post to be highly unlikely in terms of what it was proposing, Borderline bullshit, in other words, and they tag the post potentially misleading. But we do currently live on bullshit world. <laughs> You'd agree, and thus, this has actually come to pass. A Toyota spokesperson confirmed to The Drive that if a 2018 or later Toyota is equipped with Toyota's Remote Connect functions, the vehicle must be enrolled in a valid subscription, whether it be a free trial period or otherwise, in order for the key fob to start the car. This is not just about remote start, okay? It's a suite of largely bullshit apps wrapped up in the Remote Connect feature set bundled in a typically clunky Toyota smartphone app. And it's going to cost you 8 bucks a month or 80 bucks a year if you pay the full year in advance. That's in America. So them's real dollar roonies we're talking about here. And this could proliferate through the entire industry. You could be paying through the neck for all of the things that you previously took for granted before you know it. Because, hey, all the car companies, they're looking like that at what the others can get away with. Toyota also hired a team of consultants, seemingly from the former Soviet bureaucracy, to get the details here, just Goldilocks. See, there's a free trial period of three years. 
Except where you opt for Audio Plus and get 10 years of free trial, which is not available on all vehicles. And there's going to be a test later on all of this, so pay friggin' attention, okay? For example, vehicles equipped with Audio Plus get a trial of up to three years, whereas premium audio may have a trial for up to ten years. Beyond that, drivers will need to pay for a subscription to continue using remote services. Clear as the mud in Chernobyl, Toyota. Thanks so much for that, your royal highness. To Toyota, I would say with all due respect, i.e., None. You tools put a remote start button on the key fob and then you sold it to a customer together with the car. And now you are asking said customer or subsequent owner to pay if they want that button to work. And you did not tell them that this would be a salient feature of the deal when they bought the fucking car. The mafia does business this way. Look, I'm not opposed to subscriptions. I pay them happily. I pay Adobe for Creative Cloud so that I can put out these, frankly, spectacular videos for you, plus epidemic sound for the audio effects and story blocks for the Ming models and the other equally uplifting stock footage from time to time. I'm also quite happy to pay for something once and then use it. I'm giving myself a lathe and a mill for Christmas, like, dude, just baby ones, but... I would be ever so slightly miffed if the manufacturer wanted like 10 bucks a month to unlock the lead screw power feed on the lathe after my so-called free trial period expired. What a surprise, I would retort to them with, more or less. This is what happens when you put your credibility in the frickin' shredder behind a paywall and hope that the fanboys and the media give you a pass. Still heaps to come in this episode. Comment of the week coming up. Yes, and it's only Monday. I do love you out there in the audience, but sometimes for all the wrong reasons. It's like a genius contest from time to time in the comments feed, but also, paradoxically, not. Generally, however, I love you, platonically. Except if you're a vaguely cougar hottie Norwegian former cheerleader type, like approaching the hill but not over it kind of thing. I'd make an exception there. But first, before that exception is officially gazetted, Olight's pre-Jesus birthday sale kicks off tonight at 8pm. Monday, the lucky 13th of December. And it runs until midnight on the 17th. I think that's actually one of my former wedding anniversaries. I'd have to check. There have been so many. I can't even remember which X, but it's all a blur, dude. Life. Come on. Anyway, I do likes me a good discount Olight riding high on the fat man's sleigh on the evening of the 24th. Bring it, Donna and Blitzen, and tell friggin' Rudolph to lay off the sauce, will you? The mighty swivel is back. So popular. Many of you missed out over the past two sales, I know. They sell out like Dairy Whip on the eve of the Mardi Gras. So let's find out if you've been naughty or nice. I hate that. Let us find out if you've been naughty or nice on the third go around this time, shall we? Swivel is an awesome everyday work light and early 40 bucks ish in Schittsvillian nano pesos. Like, dude, that's nothing. Warrior 3, this thing is a freaking lightsaber, bridging the gap between EDC and full on tactical torch. Big button on the rear for slicing Darth Vader in half with a highly concentrated beam of photons. And I think we've all needed to do that from time to time. Like, Occasionally. And a side button for finer work. Finding your underwear in the footwell of the ranger and duties of this nature. Much easier than Braille. Been there, got the underpants, eventually. Exclusive code in the description for a further 10 bucks off the Warrior 3, so that's nice. Also of interest in the domain of stocking fillery, and let's face it, we all think about that more than we would perhaps admit, and not just at Christmas. The O-Bulb and O-Buddy. Great for the kiddies. And that O-Bulb, much tougher than it looks too. Kind of like me. It's even hot tubbable. 
kind of like me, and also great for ambient illumination in a car, in a child's bedroom, like in the context of a nightlight, during a power failure, and even for signalling because it's RGB. And there's a strobe function. Plus, there's this neat multiple Olight magnetic charging station, thing which is powered by a single USB-C input and the white Christmas version of the Baton 3. The clever case here is actually a big fat battery capable of charging the Baton 3 several times if you are remote from a power source. And if you need an ad hoc head torch for your counterculture big C cap, Baton 3 is Cinderella's shoe on the Prince Charming atop yo head. All this Olight stuff makes great Christmas present fodder, and if you're struggling, you could even give something like this to somebody else as a token. Or, yeah, you know, however that works, I've always been hazy on that. Details in the description, code link and all that jazz, plus a code for 12% off after the whole pre hazus sale. But my strong advice is, if you want a swivel, jump now, don't wait. Uplifting. This just makes me want to go out and buy a roof rack. I don't know why. But not that glorified light bar from Rhino. Like, dude, gotta be kidding. Comment of the week now, and it's only Monday, I know, but I'm fairly certain. All I can say about this one is measure twice and type once, keyboard warrior dudes. Let us prick tease this entire missive out in a few parts. Great article, and your understanding of the basics is insightful. However, I believe that you've claimed that the LPG liquid has, quote, half the weight of water, and that, quote, it is half the weight of water. At two minutes and eight seconds into the video. Charlie Carmen there, part one of three, and thank you so much, Charlie. And yeah, chiller. I did say that. In a nine kilo bottle such as this, okay, there is notionally about 20 odd litres of fluid sloshing around when the bottle's full, but the density of the liquid LPG, which is really just propane gas, is about half that of water. So it's like sloshing around a liquid that only weighs half as much as water does for any equivalent volume. And that's why it's kind of that soft and almost slow-mo rolling around sensation when you do that. I'll put a link to the full report, you know, maybe. But what exactly is the alleged problem here, dude? I think this is incorrect as the density of the LPG is claimed to be 1.89 kilos per litre or 1,898 kilograms per cubic metre or to round figure it is 1.9 times as heavy. That is heavier than water, not lighter, as I see it. The density can be easily looked up, so where am I wrong with this perspective? Chicka licka. Dude, dude, dude. This is not actually a perspective issue. It's outside the domain of opinion and feelings and things of that nature. It's a fact thing. You don't get to have a perspective on gravity, for example. Facts don't actually give a shit about your perspective in relation to them. This concept is being tragically lost in the modern world and widespread scientific illiteracy is not helping. What matters is whether you are right or wrong. And here I am upliftingly certain about who's wrong. First up, there's a slight problem with Chakalaka's hypothesis, isn't there? If liquid propane is in fact twice as heavy as water, then a nine kilo gas bottle, which is about 20 litres of contents, would weigh about 50 kilos all up, full. And clearly, it doesn't. An alternative observational approach here would be to say, hmm, nine kilos of gas as a liquid. If I'm right on this, that's only about four and a half litres of volume. So why are we making the tank so 
fucking big. Imagine the steel we could save by making them the right size. And why is the momentum so apparently low when I slosh it side to side? You know, if the liquid is actually so damn dense. These questions warrant investigation, don't you think? If you approach reality like an engineer or an applied scientist, they do. Preferably before you jam it into some humble YouTuber trying to make friends with everyone. According to actual facts, of course, LGAS says, quote, It is important to know that the density of LPG, propane, is only about half that of water. In countries where LPG is propane, for example, Australia and America, one kilo of LPG has a volume of 1.96 litres. And this right here is a snapshot of that statement by Elgas. Elgas, of course, a major supplier of propane here in Schittsville, whom I would expect to know about propane and related issues and not make fundamentally inaccurate public statements concerning propane. It's in their friggin' interest not to commit public dumb shittery in the first degree of that magnitude. Elgas's position is helpfully corroborated by Wikipedia, which says the density of liquid propane at 25 degrees C is 0.493 grams per cubic centimetre. So that's roughly half a gram per cc, which is just under half the density of water. Not looking good for Chakalaka, is it? Engineering toolbox? Well, they've got corroborating propane facts in deeply granular detail also. I therefore suggest there is only one square peg in the round hole of LPG density here, and it appears to be Chakalaka's. And what Chaka is apparently doing is random number gathering on the web, and he's doing that off the back of insufficient underlying training in this area. See, the density of propane, gas, not the liquid, the gas, okay, at one atmosphere and room temperature is about the number that C squared claimed numerically, but he got the units wrong. He alleged that the liquid was about 1.9 tonnes per cubic metre, when the gas is actually about 1.9 kilos per cubic metre, which would make it about 50% heavier than air, incidentally. <sighs> I'm so glad NASA did not employ this cavalier approach to the details during the Apollo 13 crisis and at other critical times during the moonshots. I really am. So Chakalaka was only wrong, as I see it, on two things. The phase of the propane and numerically out by a thousandfold. Missed it by that much. Not. And then, this is brilliance personified right here, confirmation bias, whatever. He must be right and therefore I must be wrong because... Everyone's the hero in their own movie, aren't they? Quad erat demonstrandum chakalaka. Yes. All of us are infallible, and I take it as a slip of the tongue. But then that is why I disagree with your catch can position. Even engineers get it wrong sometimes, even if they do not know it. Regardless, auto expert is definitely compulsory viewing, unless of course there is mandatory vaccinations. Dude, Chaka, that's just poetry. And no, I don't know what it means. Nobody does, because it's not punctuated to a middle school standard. And although it uses words, I'm pretty sure they're only approximate at best. But move over Coleridge et al, I'd suggest. All of us are infallible. Dude, not so much, Jacker. I think you mean all of us are fallible. Or perhaps none of us is infallible. But I'd suggest some of us are generally more fallible than others, dude. This doesn't generally hold one back any longer. Like, not necessarily. Look where being fallible has got... ScoMo and, of course, the Beetrooter, for example. Top of the turd mine there, times two. And you didn't slip with your tongue, dude. You put it in a blender and set it to puree. That's just a fact. So just to close this off, Chack, if I may call you that, 
The details, okay? So important, especially if you are going to allege to somebody else that they're wrong. In other news, vaccinations work, the Earth is round, 12 men actually went to the moon, humans and dinosaurs never actually coexisted, evolution is a real thing, etc. There is no vaccination mandate. Dude, vaccination is just like wearing pants. There's no pants wearing mandate. You are allowed not to wear pants. I'm not wearing any now, for example. There's no law requiring pants in the street, on the train, in the park, or even in the bank. There's a mask mandate, but there's no pants mandate. It's simply the case that some employers will not allow you to work for them if you choose not to wear pants while at work, perhaps because you're part of the pants hesitancy community, like me. This is, of course, their prerogative and, of course, yours. Vaccination, same deal. Now, fitting a catch can, that's generally like taking Panadol for a brain tumour, unlikely to be that effective long term. Doesn't really address the underlying problem. Just change the oil more often and get out on the highway once a fortnight. Dude, there's a good chap. Do try to keep up. In closing, let me offer, well done, chakalaka. Most entertaining, albeit by virtue of being outrageously wrong on every point. Even the one about auto-expert viewing being compulsory. Like, there's no auto-expert mandate either. If you're auto-expert hesitant or acid tongue intolerant, whatever. I get it, dude. Just watch cat videos instead.